Welcome Gemma, Gemma Wallace, who's our detached youth worker working across Fife, and she'll be sharing a little bit of that later. Uh, and also some wonderful news uh, that um, Steve and Felicity would like to announce their intention to get married on the 1st of April. It's not an April Fool, right? <laughs> it is genuine, um, and uh, people are welcome to join them for the ceremony in here, in our hall, at 3.45 on the 1st of April. Let's give them a moment of applause. God's love to me is wonderful. Can you make that statement this morning? Have you experienced that love? Do you know that love for yourself? Uh, because this is not just a nice set of words. It's a testimony. It's declaring what we believe. And we believe, don't we, that God's love to me is wonderful, that he should deign to hear the faintest whisper of my heart and wipe from my eye the tear. And though I cannot comprehend, not this side of heaven, such love so great, so deep, is his strong hands my soul i trust he will not he will not fail to keep can i invite you to stand as we sing this song of testimony together thank you Dan. <laughs> Thank you. 
a little ball of sheep's wool. Uh, hopefully you received that as you came in. Uh, if not, uh, perhaps James wouldn't mind just making sure that he's not got one. Just raise your hand let James know and then we can get that to you. But before we look at our prayers today, I want to uh, invite Gemma to come and share with you a little bit about what's been going on since I last announced that we'd appointed Gemma as the detached youth worker working across the core in Fife. Uh, I know that many of you are probably thinking, what's it all about? What is this detached youth work all about? Uh, and how does it uh, affect the kingdom here in Kokodi? Uh, and hopefully, G uh, Gemma will be able to tell you a little bit about that in her own words. So uh, perhaps we could just welcome Gemma to come and share with us. Thank you for your warm welcome this morning. Um, I will try not to talk too much because I do talk a lot, um, but I'll try and keep it short. Um, so some of you know me, some of you don't. Um, I have attended Glenorchus Core since I was little. Um, I'm still there, I'm 37 now, so it's been a longish time. Um, and I've worked there for the past nine years as the playgroup leader. And recently, um, over the last few years became more involved um, in the youth work and children's work and um, a couple of years ago was employed, appointed the core mission facilitator at Glenorchus. Um, so my involvement in youth work became um, more um, and then COVID hit. So everything stopped and we lost those relationships, we lost those engagements with young people um, and it actually got me thinking about all the young people that actually we don't see regularly. We only see a small percentage of young people from our area that come to our youth club. Um, and maybe this was an opportunity to go out into the community and meet and engage with more young people. Um, the army have, are now pushing street-based youth work. So it was good to speak to um, people that were already doing that kind of work. Um, and it kind of ignited a fire inside me. Um, I kind of thought, we're, we're missing a trip here. Um, there's so many young people that aren't given the opportunity to explore faith. Um, and that's because maybe they don't want to come into a church building. For many reasons, they don't know what's expected. Um, they don't want to know about God. Well, they think they don't know, want to know about God. Um, and we are restricted as well. We're restricted by numbers and ratios and how many we can have in the building and things. So going out there 
um, kind of gets rid of those restrictions, gets rid of those kind of thoughts of the young people. And, and yeah, so um, getting out there, engaging where those young people are. Um, so I, it was something I was looking into. Um, I don't know if Andrew has mentioned how this role came about. A funder had money and he was looking for a new project. And I innocently said, detached youth work across Fife. Um, and he obviously had a passion for youth work, so that's that's where he went with what he went with. Um, so I'm going to be working across six core, um, which is quite daunting. Um, but we're lucky in Fife that they're all quite close together. The leadership in the, at each core has a real passion for youth work and a real passion to work together. Um, I don't think it would it would work if we didn't have those relationships. Um, so it's, we're really, really, really lucky. Um, so yeah, so detached youth work, we want to engage with young people where they are, be a consistent presence, um, and be good examples of Christianity out on the street, out where they are. Jesus was never, was, wasn't always in a building, he was out meeting people, um, and we want, to, we want to do the same, we want to be a good example of that. We want to build relationships, and through those relationships we want to help young people to make better decisions, to avoid kind of being labelled as antisocial. Um, we want the community to look out and say, there's a group of young people, that's okay. Because um, sometimes we have preconceived ideas about what groups of young people will do. Um, and yeah, unfortunately, some of them do cause trouble, but maybe we can go out there and, and help them make better decisions. We want to give them a voice why are they making these decisions? Are they bored? Is there nothing in the community for them? Um, let's give them a voice um, to make their community welcoming and give them something in that community to be proud of. Um, and through all that, through those relationships, we want to give them the opportunity to explore faith. So, I'm nearly at the end, you'll be glad to hear. It is something that we can all get involved in. I know it seems daunting going out in the cold and the winter's not great, um, but there are other ways that you can get involved. Um, I don't know about here, but in Glenothis we have a prayer group. So if anyone's got any prayers, um, we let everyone know and we ask them to pray for that. Um, so if you've got something here, I'd really like to tap into that. Um, and get anything so uh, we've got prayer requests every night when we go out and we write down any prayer requests so we would contact you and um, talk contact maybe whoever's in charge of that to, to roll out those prayer requests um, some cores have offered to make tea and coffee for us coming back so if that's something that you feel led to do then that would be great but we just want to support and encourage those volunteers um, a lot of the volunteers this will be completely new to them I'm going to tell you a couple of things, a couple of things that have happened in Glenothis. So Glenothis is up and running. Um, we kind of got up and running before I actually got this job. Um, and we have been going out since July. Um, and we have been engaging with young people at a skate park near our core. Altogether, I think we've engaged with over 50 young people. Over 50 young people have come and spoken to us. And it might be short engagements, it might be a higher how are you doing, it might, and it's, some of it's been longer engagements, talking about school, talking about family life, talking about why they're bored, there's nothing to do in the community. So that's the start of those relationships. Um, and when we go back to the skate park, we hear them say, oh, it's the people from the Salvation Army. Yeah, we do have snacks. So that's probably one of the reasons that they come over. <laughs> But it's a nice grey card, it gets them to come over. Um, and yeah, so it's been quiet, it's been cold, it's, the weather's not been great. Um, but on Friday night, we met up with four or five young people that we haven't seen for a while. They haven't been out because it was cold. Um, but we stood in the cold, freezing, and we had a chat. Um, asked them about their Christmas, asked them um, how school was going. Ask them about how they were coping with COVID. Young people are really, really struggling at the minute. Um, so we want to be there, not just in church, not just in school, but where they are, where they feel comfortable to be themselves. 
Um, and yeah, those relationships are really flourishing um, and I feel really, really lucky that I've got the opportunity to do this all over time. Um, so I hope that's kind of answered maybe some of the questions that you did have. If you have any other questions, please give me a shout after. Um, but if you want to speak to me um, more about it, I can give you my email, I can come and meet you for a chat. Um, I like tea and cake, so we can go out for tea and cake. Um, but yeah, if you want to be involved, please contact me. Um, please keep us in your prayers. Um, and yeah, thank you very much for listening. Just before you go, Gemma. Can we pray for you mm -hmm. and for your volunteers, particularly Glen Rothis that are up and running now, and then also pray for more volunteers across the other five calls. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the vision um, that you have shared through Gemma, through the various um, youth workers in and across Fife, through our um, divisional headquarters and their support, and also um, this gentleman who's felt led to donate a significant amount of money that can make this happen. We just are so grateful that um, you are working in this way, in this part of your vineyard. And we want to pray for Gemma, we want to pray for all the volunteers at Glen Rothis, we want to pray for the volunteers that will come forward in the other um, settings, in the other call, or that you will protect them in this role that you will give them guidance, that you will give them lots of opportunities to do as Gemma said this morning, to share your love in a very practical way, and in a very listening way, and a pastoral way. Bless her and bless all those who are involved in this project, we pray. In the name of Jesus, Amen. At the Bible study on um, Tuesday, we looked at the parable of the sower, and um, Lots, um, lots came from it, but one of the strongest messages that we took away that we are all called to be that sower of seeds. And uh, isn't this a, a beautiful, real way of being a sower of those seeds? We also came to the conclusion that sometimes you don't get to see the benefit of that seed sowing because it needs time to nurture and grow and somebody else sees the benefit. Is that not true about this project as well? That we, in these present days, might not see all the fruit that will come, but because God's in charge of it and God is nurturing that seed and watering that seed, we do believe, don't we, that there will be fruit. So thank you once again, Gemma. So for our prayers, as we reflect a little on what Gemma shared about the detached youth work, I'd like us to commit to praying for her and for the work at Glen Rothis and the other Salvation Army centres as it opens up. And most importantly, to pray for these young people that they, we will be meeting in the days to come. Today, we're gonna to look at the parable of the lost sheep and you should have been given as you came in a little ball of sheep's wool and uh, Please, if you're allergic to sheep's wool, please don't touch this. <laughs> I don't want any incidents. But uh, if you're not, then I'd encourage you to get hold of that now as we focus our prayers, both on what we're going to learn from the parable, but also on what Gemma has shared. Take a, a close look at it. Feel it in your hand. If you like, have a smell of it, because it smells like a sheep. <laughs> This morning, I'd like you to see this piece of sheep's wool as a young person in Kakodi. You may know a specific young person, a, a family member, or a, a child, or a grandchild, or a, um, a friend, or a neighbour, or someone who you know in your street. Or it may be just a young person that you don't yet know. As you hold the wool, or if you're at home reading the results or watching this on a video, visualize that young person. If you've got more than one young person in mind, perhaps you can split the wool in half and visualize the two of them. Now, 
I'd encourage you just to pull off one strand or one piece of the wool. Because in the parable we're going to hear later, we hear, don't we, of one sheep that goes away from the 99 that remain. And as you hold that one separate young person in your hand, I wonder now if you could just put up the Bible reading for us. From Isaiah chapter 53, familiar words I'm sure, but I thought it would be really helpful to us today to connect with this image, this picture of the sheep and the shepherd. Isaiah 53 verses 4 to 6. I wonder if we could read these words together. Let's share this reading. Surely he took upon our pain and bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds we are healed. We, all like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has burned and our way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. As we listen to the words of a beautiful song entitled Shepherd of My Heart. I want you to keep those names and those people that you're thinking about in mind. And then at an appropriate moment, when you've prayed for that young person, bring them back into the fold and pray that God will shine his light upon them. Let's use this time to consider the young people that we know, or perhaps don't know yet know, and this detached youth work. Let's pray. Deepest gratitude, you love me, 
even more. So as I walk through valleys, listening for the master's call, I'll trust in you, shepherd. is our desire this morning that we will wholeheartedly trust you as our shepherd. The times that we sometimes go astray, help us to find the fault. Lord, we pray for these young people that um, we may never meet, yet we know that you are precious, they are precious to you, as that reading taught us, that you took on that pain and that iniquity at Calvary for everyone, including young people who don't yet know you. Father, help us to be good witnesses to the Good Shepherd. Help us to lead lost sheep back into the fold. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to listen to the message from the band now, please. We are March this morning, just to break things up. Uh, so March called in Toby Cole Youth. In Toby Cole is a, a core in Canada, which uh, Evelyn's uh, sister in law was at. Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
just at this time. Uh, as you know, we have uh, the plates at the front, come when you are comfortable. And then following that, uh, following the prayer, Daniel's going to bring us the Bible reading this morning from Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 7. So let's take up the offering just now. Bless the gift, bless the giver, we pray. Amen. Daniel, could I invite you to come to stand at the front with that microphone? And uh, as I say, if you would like to follow in your own scriptures, it will be up on the screen too. It's Luke chapter 15, verses 1 to 7. Thank you, Daniel. Now, the tax collectors and sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus. But the Pharisees and the teachers of the law muttered, This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. Then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Doesn't he have... Doesn't he leave the 99 and open country and go after the lost sheep until he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. Then he calls his friends and neighbours together and says, Rejoice with me. I have found my lost sheep. I tell you that in the same way there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents down over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. Thank you very much. Wasn't that so clearly and beautifully read? Thank you. You can do that every week now, Daniel. Or make sure every week, it's okay. Excellent, thank you ever so much. We're going to look more at those words in a moment, but first of all, we're going to listen to the message from the singing group this morning. <laughs> Thank you. 
I wonder if you've ever been lost. I remember as a, a child about uh, eight years old going to the National History Museum in London. And if anybody's ever been to it, it's a vast place. And to cut a long story short, I got lost. My parents obviously were quite distressed by that, as was I when they caught up with me. Um, but being lost is not a nice sensation, is it? It's not a nice feeling. It's not a nice position to be in. In our little series on the parables, Jesus often spoke, didn't he? And um, parables that Jesus told, we now have at least three meanings, a scriptural meaning. They often quote from the Old Testament. They have a, a spiritual meeting, meaning. Each one had a, a spiritual truth for the hearer. And they are sound, aren't they? They're reliable, they are trustworthy, they make sense. His parables always made sense. So far we've looked at two parables, that of the talent a couple of weeks ago, and then on Tuesday at the Bible study, the parable of the sower. And today we turn our thoughts to what's often termed the lost parables. Not because they're um, accidentally being mislaid or suddenly popped up after many, many years but lost because they're a little series of three stories by Jesus. The lost sheep, the lost coin, and the lost son, which I believe Norman's going to pick up in a Bible study in a couple of weeks' time. We hope. <laughs> like most of the parables recorded in the Gospels, we have a, a scene to set, helping us to realise that the stories of Jesus are applicable in all settings and in all circumstances and in all time frames. In the case of today's parable, we are given details about the real mix of listeners. Today, as we open up the scriptures in this room, in this place, in this time, or whether you're reading it at home or watching it on YouTube, what Jesus said then is just as reliable, trustworthy, and true now. And I guess right at the start, to pose the challenging personal question, which of these groups will you belong to that are outlined at the beginning of the parable? The tax collectors and sinners those who perhaps have a history that is holding you back. Maybe you have issues with money or stewardship. Those who come to listen to Jesus because they know there is something special about him and want to know more. Or are you in the group of Pharisees and teachers of the law? And notice that Luke records their mutterings and grumblings. I won't look at anybody in particular. <laughs> Those that had perhaps allowed their hearts to be chained up by the laws and become judgmental or controlling. Perhaps you are disgruntled this morning or uneasy about something. Is your heart a little hardened like the Pharisees? And you've lost a bit of purpose and drive that you once had. And then, of course, there's the unknown crowd, those that aren't recorded by Luke, those who were there but don't quite know what to make of it all. Who is this Jesus teacher? Who do you identify with this morning? And right at the start, acknowledge that before God and invite the Holy Spirit to teach and guide you this morning. As we think about this and prepare to receive from the Lord, let's look at three aspects of this parable. The sheep, the satisfaction and the sinner. Firstly, the sheep. Verses 
3 and 4, Jesus describes the scenario of a shepherd and his sheep. If only one out of one, sorry, if only one out of 100 sheep were lost, the shepherd would leave the 99 to search for it. As we discovered on Tuesday, this use of a familiar setting or metaphor of shepherding sheep, in this case, would have been familiar to the listeners. The image of a, a shepherd is often used in the Old Testament, as we read earlier from Isaiah. But then there are other beautiful words, aren't there, that we'll all probably be able to say by heart. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. It's no accident that Jesus chose such a scene and such a description to address this setting of sinners, tax collectors and grumbling Pharisees. <clears throat> Secondly, the satisfaction. The parable continues, finding the lost sheep for the shepherd brings great joy, places it on his shoulders and carries it back to the fold. All rejoice with the shepherd because the lost sheep has been found, is returned to the safety of the fold and the shepherd once again has what he is precious to him. One of our core values is evangelism and for me this parable sums up this value perfectly. Is our purpose not to go and find the lost sheep and return them? safely to the fold and that may be to the safety of this call or to the safety of another church but critically to the kingdom of God. Jem has spoken this morning about this new project of going out into the streets and going and finding the lost sheep and who knows what their safe fold will look like like not us, but the Lord certainly does. Everything we are, everything we do, everything we profess to be, every time we put on this uniform, every time we speak or act in an op is an opportunity to return a sheep to the fold. I often tell a, a personal story when using this uh, parable of a holiday in the Norfolk Broads, um, a, a holiday that involved hiring a boat and you know sailing around the Norfolk Broads and stopping at various places. And on this occasion, about four days into our journey, my father and I, uh, probably about 16 or 17 years old, decided we were going to go rowing. So come off of the, the main power boat, as it were, the, the main hat home, and go rowing in a little... Um, well, looking back on it, back on it, a very lightweight craft, and uh, we went went rowing, managed to get as far as Great Yarmouth Harbour. Now, anybody who knows more about the seas and uh, how they work and tides than I do will know that a harbour or a port often has very strong currents in it because of the way the way the, the water moves in and out. Well, we weren't as clued up on this as we perhaps should have been. And uh, you can guess what's coming. Paddling into the harbour, we had to paddle harder and harder until one of us slipped off the seat and over we went. <laughs> I won't say who it was that slipped off the seat. I'll leave you to guess. Well, thankfully, we were near the, the edge of the harbour. We were able to get onto the shore. We were wearing all the, the right safety gear, so there was nothing sinister about it, just a very embarrassing couple of people trying to roll boat amateurly. What I didn't realise up until a little later that day, that in my pocket had been my wallet. Well, by the time I got back very wet to the boat, 
it was no longer in my pocket. So why am I telling you this story? Well, the irony of it is, is it was a, 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 a wallet that had stitched on one side. I was lost, and on the other, but Jesus found me. Well, I'm still awaiting for the delivery of the wallet. <laughs> and the truth is I probably never will see that wallet again. It is lost for good. We, like sheep, were lost. But Jesus found us. The shepherd that we read about in Isaiah is looking for us. The shepherd that the songsters sung about is looking for us. He sought and found me. My challenge would be don't hide from him because it brings great joy on rejoicing once we are found. And thirdly, the sinner. In the final part of the parable, verse seven, it tells us, when a sinner repents of his or her sin, the angels in heaven rejoice. Christ rejoiced, rejoices, and we should too. I don't know if you can remember the day that you first accept Jesus into your heart and was that sheep that was returned to the fold. But when that happens, rejoicing in heaven takes place. The angels themselves rejoice when one is returned to God's fold. I didn't know this, but of all animals, a sheep is the only one who cannot find their way home. They need to be found and led or carried back by the shepherd. Christ being led like a lamb to die on a cross made it possible for him to then lead us back to the Father. Are those true are those words true for you this morning? I want to say to you, you have been led home by the shepherd. And because you are home, there is no fear, no condemnation. Margaret, you've been led home by the shepherd. Beth, you have been led home by the shepherd. Michelle, you have been led home by the shepherd. Put your own name into that sentence. And here this morning, you are in a place of safety and in the fold of the living God. The moment that happens, there will be rejoicing in heaven. And the beautiful thing to remember is that there was nothing particularly special about that one sheep that went away. He was just valuable to the shepherd. And that's true for each of us this morning. No matter what opinion we might have about ourselves or what the world tells us, in the shepherd's eyes, we are a lost sheep that's gone astray and he has sought and found us. In the story of the lost sheep, the, the punchline regarding the resulting rejoicing in heaven depends on the Jewish belief that the two halves of God's creation, heaven and earth, were meant to fit together and be in harmony with one another. If you discover what's going on in heaven, in this case the rejoicing, you'll discover how things were meant to be on earth. That, after all, is the point of praying, isn't it? Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. As far as the, the legal experts and the Pharisees were concerned, the closest you could get to heaven was in the temple. And the temple required strict purity. 
from the priests and the, the closest that non-priests could get to copying heaven was to maintain a similarly strict purity in every aspect of their life. But now Jesus here in this parable is declaring that heaven that heaven was having a great noisy rejoicing party every time a single sinner saw the light and became part of God's family. So if earth dwellers, us, want to copy the life of heaven then we'll have a party every time one of those sheep is returned to the fold. So in conclusion, the, the point of the parable is then clear. All heaven is having a party, the angels are joining in, and if we don't have one as well, we'll be out of tune with God's reality. Is that not something to rejoice about, an invitation to rejoin, re rejoice in the party of heaven. So today, as we heard the story of Jesus about the lost sheep, I ask you three simple questions. Are you lost? Have you wandered far away? If you are, seek Jesus the shepherd, because he is seeking you. Secondly, can you apply for the job of a shepherd or shepherdess and go seeking the lost sheep of the world and lead them back to the fold? If so, there's no application for no interviews. Just simply step out and start looking. And thirdly, as I asked at the beginning, who do you identify with in that crowd listening to the parable? The tax collector, the grumbling Pharisee, or a repentant sinner who says, I want to party with Jesus? And a short story to finish today's Bible message in case you still haven't heard Clive and Lucy James described it was decided it was time for their daughter to have a dog. They named him Reckless. But one day, Reckless got out and disappeared during a freak storm. I think we can all identify with the freak storms at the moment. The whole family was heartbroken. It was like losing a family member, commented Clive. For their daughter's 10th birthday, over a year and a half after they went uh, losing Reckless, they went to the lo local dog rescue centre to adapt, adopt a dog. The first dog they saw looked very familiar. Reckless recognised them immediately and they were sure it was him when they saw the scar on his head. Finding the lost was a reason to celebrate as they took their new returned dog home 10 years later. A call for us to start searching for the lost. <laughs>
searching God, that you are the first to do the seeking, to find the lost sheep. But we acknowledge, Lord, that we too are called to be shepherds and to go and call in the lost sheep into your fold. Lord, this morning we pray for opportunities and wisdom in doing that. We pray that first of all we will know our safe place within your fold. That we won't be one of the grumbling Pharisees that chain people up with laws and restrictions, but instead will be one who rejoices with the angels in heaven at every single sheep that is returned to the fold. Lord, as we look at our clumps of wool this morning and visualise them as real people who need to find their way to you, Lord, help us to be the good shepherd that you were for us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to finish with a song that we've already heard um, from the singing group, but we're going to sing it ourselves. The Saviour sought and found me far from the narrow way. He made my blinded eyes to see on that wonderful, wonderful day. 
If you'd like to stand as we bring our worship to a close, I'd invite you to do that just now as we sing. morning. Um, we were supposed to be live streaming the service this morning. Slight technical hitch as I've already said, so that's not happened, but we have recorded it so if anybody would like to catch up with the service uh, on YouTube later, that's fine. Um, the Bible study started on Tuesday. It was so encouraging to see 20 people, uh, and I have to be honest and say that I've been to lots of different calls where single figures are the norm at a Bible study. So personally I'm encouraged by 20 attending, but more so I'm encouraged for you as we um, grow God's kingdom here and see how God is speaking to us. This week's will be Brian, and it's Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 to 35, the parable of the unforgiving servant, if you want to read it in advance. And uh, thank you for those who contributed to our food bank, that's really been so helpful. Thank you for that. And finally, please remember our visioning day, the 26th of February, a day when we can consider the future of the core. Uh, the flip chart is just where you line up for tea and coffee. If you can come on that day, please sign up so we know we've got you covered in the catering. Have a great week. Do stay for tea and coffee. Great to see you this morning. Good morning and God bless. <laughs>